Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Farming for Listings. My name is uh, Mark Whitehorn. I'm with uh, DPI Websites. A lot of you know me, you've taken my classes. Some of you are my clients. Uh, if not, welcome. Uh, so this is a marketing class. I'm gonna give you a lot of statistics today. What we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna go over sales statistics, inventory levels. We're gonna look at how to do research. What is farming, creating a mailing list, identifying good listings, marketing budgets, um, and marketing your listings. So we're gonna go over a lot of stuff today. If you uh, give me in the chat, if you put down your email address, I will email you the presentation later today. And then um, also later today, I will put this on my YouTube channel and I'll give you the link at the end of the class. And one last thing, if you have any questions, just um, ask questions. Just keep asking questions. Go to the chat and type in questions. I like questions. Okay, so let's start. You are a retailer. What is a retailer? A retailer is like a store owner. And in their store, they have merchandise. They have things that they want to sell and they want merchandise that's going to move, that's gonna sell. The one thing a retailer hates doing is getting out the feather duster and dusting off their merchandise because that means it is not selling. So what is your merchandise? Your merchandise is listings. You want listings that are going to sell. You want listings that people are going to buy. You don't want a listing sitting there for a year, year and a half because you don't get paid. You want to get listings that are going to sell. Here is, uh, this is some stats from the Florida Association of Realtors. This is their home um, buyers and sellers report. And if you look at the top bullet, you're gonna see that 74% of sellers only contact one real estate agent. 70% of sellers only contact one realtor. You've got to be that first realtor in the door. If you're not that first realtor in the door, your chances of getting that business is really slim. The uh, trick in being that first realtor in the door is answering your phone. A lot of um, realtors don't answer their phones. So the first trick is answering your phone. If you answer your phone, then you have a good shot of getting that business. For those of you who are coming in late, uh, if you go to the chat and give me your email address, I'll email you this presentation uh, later on today. All right, so we're gonna go over some statistics. We're gonna go over a lot of different numbers. So in Dayton Broward County in 2018, we sold about 91,000 houses and condos, and it, it's pretty the same in 2019. And half of the, um, it, it's pretty evenly split between houses and condos. 41% of the sales are cash sales. We're, this number is going down. The number of cash sales is going down. What's happening is we're returning to a more traditional market. Uh, there's a new crop of buyers out there. They are millennials. They're starting to get married and they're buying homes in neighborhoods like uh, Homestead and Miramar and places like that, where there's yards and parks and schools. And they're going out and getting mortgages. So the cash buyers are actually going down. So this is from the Florida Association of Realtors. Um, if, I'll show you how to get this later on. And this is their interactive graphics. So if you look at this, this is Miami-Dade County Active Inventory of single family homes. Active inventory of single family homes. So if you look at the beginning on the left hand side, this is 2009, you're gonna see that the inventory levels are really high. And then what happened was all these cash buyers came in and bought things up at a discount. And then what you see is the inventory levels are pretty flat. Flat is good. 
flat means that uh, inventory is, is selling. Things are coming in, things are going out. Flat is good. So it was high, and then we had all the cash buyers came in, and then inventory of single family homes is pretty flat. Here we have the inventory in Miami-Dade County of condos. Once again, here's 2009, high inventory. The market crash happened in 2009. The cash buyers came in. They started buying things out. It bottomed out in 2012. And then as you can see, the inventory levels started increasing after that. What started in 2012? New construction. They started building new buildings. The problem is they built too many, so the condo inventory went up after that. If you have any questions, just you know, shoot away in the chat. Okay, here we have month supply in Miami-Dade County of single family homes. So here we have four and a half months supply. So let me explain how this works. There's two markets. There's a buyer's market and there's a seller's market. The middle is six months supply. Less than six months supply makes it a seller's market. Inventory levels are, are low. You get your price. More than six months supply is a buyer's market. Too much inventory. So right now for single family homes, we're sitting at 4.5 uh, months supply. It is a seller's market, low inventory, you get your price. Any question on month supply? Remember, six months supply is the middle. Here we have condos, month supply, eight months supply of condos, which means that it is a buyer's market. There's too much inventory eight months supply. They build too much. Let's look at um, sorry, going the wrong way. There we go. Broward County. Single family homes, inventory levels. So here we have the uh, inventory level of single family homes in Broward County. Here's the crash cash buyers came in and as you can see the inventory levels are pretty flat and flat once again is good because that means that things are coming in and going out they're moving here we have townhouses and condos in Broward County same thing inventory levels are flat which is fine which is good which is which is different than Dade County because the inventory levels are too high in Dade County Month's supply of single family homes <clears throat> in Broward County. 3.9 months supply, which makes it a heavy seller's market, very low inventory. Realtors are fighting each other to get listings in uh, Broward County of single family homes, very low supply. Here we have condos in Broward County. 6.1 months supply, which is neutral. It's neither a buyer's market or a seller's market. It's neutral. Palm Beach, single family homes. Here are the inventory levels. Same thing. And as you can see, the inventory levels are flat, which is good. Um, condos, same thing. It's a little jaggedy, but it's pretty flat. Months supply of single family homes in Broward and Palm Beach County, 4.2 months supply, which makes it a heavy seller's market, low inventory. And then here we have condos in Palm Beach County, 5.5 months supply, which is slightly into a seller's market. So the, the reality is there's a shortage of a lot of inventories except for one one type of uh, product, and that is condos in Miami-Dade County. That's the only thing where there's too much inventory. 
So uh, basically, you might want to shy away from getting listings of certain condos in Broward County. And I'm going to break it down by neighborhood in a minute. Um, any questions? OK. So here's how you calculate month supply. It's a simple formula. You go to the matrix, and you look up a to an area. You look up the total number of listings in an area. You can do it by city, by zip code, by price, and you write down the total number of active listings. And then you go and you change the status from active to closed, zero to 30 days, and you write that number down, and you divide the sold into the active, and that gives you month supply. So for example, if you go to an area and there's 100 available listings, and 10 sold in the last 30 days. So 10 divided into 100 gives you 10 months supply. Any questions on this formula? OK, so what we're going to do now is we're going to break this down by neighborhood. We're going to put this into practice. So first, we're going to look at Miami-Dade County. So I went to Matrix. I went to Miami-Dade County. And I did the county at large. I'm going to do it by neighborhood in a minute. And I went to condos. And then I put in 100-300. And there were a total of 4,653 active listings. 286 sold in the last 30 days. So 286 divided into 4653 gives me 16 months supply, which makes it a buyer's market, too much inventory. But 286 did sell in the last 30 days, so there's still activity there. So if you're going to get a listing in Miami-Dade County of a condo in this price point, it better be priced right. If you're not priced right, it's just going to sit there. There's two types of sellers, the one who wants to sell and the one who just wants to put it out there for their price. The one who wants to put it out there for their, put it out there for their price, you're not going to make money off those people and you're going to decide if you want that listing because you only get paid when it sells. The one who's motivated to sell, they will be price sensitive and you have a shot at making money off those people. Then I changed the price. 300,000 to 500,000, 3,795 active listings, 116 sold in the last 30 days. So there's some activity, but it's 32 months supply. And then we did 500 to 750, 55 months supply. 750 to a million, 130 months supply, and over a million, there's a lot of inventory sitting there. I had one client who said, oh, I got a good listing. It's a million dollar condo in Brickle. And the reason he said it was a good listing was because when it sells, you know, it's payday. But the problem is it could take him two years to sell it. But on the other hand, there's still some activity there. So if you get a listing in this uh, price point, it better be priced right. If you're competitive, you can sell it. Then I changed the status from uh, condos to homes in Miami-Dade County, 100,000 to 300,000, four months supply. 300,000 to 500,000, 5.6 months supply. Basically, if you get a listing of a single family home in Miami-Dade County under $500,000, that listing is gonna sell, and it's gonna sell fast. Once you get above 500,000, you'll see that it starts diminishing. There is one exception here, million dollar homes. You see that number, 57 sold in the last month? There's a, an anomaly going on. A lot of rich people from the Northeast are moving down here. They're getting away from the coronavirus. They're looking to get tax breaks. <clears throat> and they're buying homes down here. So there is an opportunity here. But if you get a listing in this price point, million dollar plus, it better be priced right. So we broke this down by neighborhood now. I went to Brickell, 33131. 
There's uh, three zip codes in Brickell, they're all similar. Condos, 100,000 to 300,000, one sold in the last month. You can't do the math here, so forget that. 300,000 to 500,000, 10 sold in the last month. That's 47 months supply, and you see where it goes from here. So basically, you've got 18 sold in the last month. So there's not a lot of activity in that zip code. So you really don't want to get listings in that zip code. 33132, which is downtown Miami, similar numbers to Brickle. I mean, there's just not a lot of activity. 11 sold, 100,000 to 300,000, okay. But you see everything else is pretty stagnant. So you really don't want listings there. Miami Beach condos, here we have 47 months supply. 19 sold in the last month, so there is some activity, but um, basically not a lot of activity here in condos in Miami Beach. Miami Beach homes, once again, million dollar homes, look, there's activity there. So once again, if you get a listing of a million dollar home, you better be priced right so it will sell. If it's not priced right, it's just gonna sit there. Um, for those of you who came in late, once again, go to my chat, the chat box and give me your email address and I will send you this presentation. Uh, Sunny Isles Beach, similar numbers, not a lot of activity here, not a lot of sales in Sunny Isles Beach. Then we have Doral, Doral condos, 20 months supply, 100,000 to 300,000. There were 11 sales, there's a little bit of activity there, but not a lot. Um, 300,000 to 500,000, eight sold in the last month. Then we have uh, single family homes in um, Doral. It's kind of stagnant right now, not a lot going on. That neighborhood's kind of slow. Um, Homestead. Homestead is a hot, hot neighborhood. Time to drive down to Homestead. Get some sticky buns while you're there. Um, yeah, Homestead, look at this. Low inventory, a lot of sales. A lot of millennials are buying down there because it's, it's affordable. And there's, there's schools and parks and yards. Um, so it's a lot of activity in Homestead. Hialeah. Another neighborhood where there's a lot of, a lot of activity going on there. Um, Steve just asked me about the recording. Steve, I'm gonna put this on my YouTube channel later. I'll give you the link later on, okay? Um, so Hialeah, hot, hot neighborhood. Miami Lakes, another hot neighborhood. Uh, Palm Springs North, another hot neighborhood. Those are the neighborhoods that you wanna get listings in. People are buying in those neighborhoods. Cutler Bay, another hot neighborhood. They're starting to run low on inventory here. Look at this, 100,000 to 300,000, only seven listings available. They're running out of inventory. It was a lot uh, before, but they're running out of inventory there. 300,000 to 500,000, five months supply. Low inventory. Um, Estefania, yes, I'll give you my YouTube channel later. You can get a link to see my, uh, I'll give you a link later to see my YouTube channel. Miami Gardens, another hot video, uh, hot, hot neighborhood, excuse me. Another hot neighborhood, a lot of activity in Miami Gardens. Um, West Miami Gardens, where they're gonna build the mall in a, in a couple of years. Uh, but things are selling there, low inventory. Broward County. Um, Evelyn, yes, this will be on my YouTube channel. Broward County, Miramar, hot, hot neighborhood. Condos, 100,000 to 300,000, 6.7 months supply. That actually ticked up a little, it was lower before. It's just that the sales have slowed down a little because of what's going on in the market in, with the crisis and all that. But low inventory. Single family homes, three months supply. 
you get a listing of a cond of a single family home under 500,000 in Miramar and that thing is going to sell and it's going to sell fast. Pembroke Pines, another hot neighborhood. Condos 100,000 or 300,000, 31 sales in the last month. What you have here are Hopa, 55 plus communities. There's a ton of sales going on right now in 55 plus communities. A lot of people from the Northeast are sending their parents down because they don't want them living among the virus and things like that. And a lot of these are cash deals <clears throat> that close within a few weeks. There's, there's a lot of 55 plus communities in West Broward. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. And then any single family home in Pembroke Pines. You get a listing of a single family home in Pembroke Pines and that thing is gonna sell and it's gonna sell fast. Sunrise, Davie, Plantation, all hot neighborhoods. Hollywood, Hollywood condos. So this is tough because a lot of the condo buildings in Hollywood are old. A lot of them have special assessments. So, I mean, there's a little activity here, 100,000 to 300,000. But there's, a, but there's still a lot of inventory. And then you see, once you get above 300,000, you'll see that the number of sales taper off uh, dramatically. But when you look at single family homes in Hollywood, anything under 500,000, a lot of sales of single family homes in Hollywood under 500,000. Once you get above 500,000, you'll see that it tapers off. So we don't want those listings. Hallandale condos is the, the same deal with, um, in Hallandale as Hollywood with the condos, they're older buildings, a lot of special assessments. So there was some sales in, uh, there were some sales in 100,000 to 300,000, but um, once you get above that, you see that basically it's, um, it, it's non-existent. Tamarack, hot neighborhood, hot, hot neighborhood. This is not your grandmother's Tamarack anymore. A lot of young people are moving to Tamarack. You still have the condos, 100,000 to 300,000, which are the 55 plus communities. There's still a lot of sales there but you still have a lot of single family homes selling under 500,000, very low inventory. A lot of realtors are fighting each other to get listings in West Broward County or Coral Springs or Margate, neighborhoods like that. Pompano is another hot neighborhood. So condos, 100,000 to 300,000, a lot of sales. But once you get above that price, you see it tapers off. Pompano Homes, um, this is slowed down a little, but anything under 300,000 is good. Weston, here's Weston Homes. So uh, there's some activity here. Um, it has slowed down because the uh, virus is, uh, you know, sales have slowed down about a third, but there is some activity here. Boca Raton. Condos, 100,000 to 300,000, 64 sales. A lot of activity here. Once again, you have our 55 plus communities. And then once you get above the, um, the 300,000, you'll see it starts tapering off. Boca Raton Homes. So here, I don't understand this thing here. This is weird. It's an anomaly, but look at this, 300,000 to 500,000, 4.8 months supply. 500,000 to 750, 25 sold in the last month. So there's activity, there's a need for uh, people buying here. And then the million plus, 18 sold in the last month. So there are rich people buying million dollar plus homes in Boca Raton. There's a, there's a market there for that. Uh, Boynton Beach, condos 100,000 to 300,000, a lot of activity. Once again, we have our 55 plus community there. And then Boynton Beach Homes, under 500,000, a lot of sales. Any questions?
Okay, so basically to sum it up, <clears throat> you want listings of condos below $300,000, and then you want listings of single family homes below 500. And then if you're gonna go after the, um, the high end market, the million dollar market, you can do that as well, but realize that um, it better be priced right. Uh, Claudia wants to know about Aventura. So sure, Aventura has the same numbers as, as um, Sunny Isles. Basically, um, below 300,000 is selling, above 300,000 is basically uh, kind of stagnant. But it's, just, it's similar numbers as, um, as Sunny Isles Beach. Uh, Shoshana, when focusing on a farming area, how many should you focus on? So, um, <clears throat> Shoshana, traffic is really bad in South Florida. So you really want to, you know, focus in on a, um, you know, close to one area. Because otherwise, you're going to be driving and stuck in your car. So if you're doing West Broward, it's pretty easy to do two or three neighborhoods like Davy, Davy and Sunrise or, or plant, Plantation, because they're all near each other. Um, if you're in Miami and you want to do Hialeah, Miami Lakes, Palm Springs North, that's all near each other. So you could do that. Uh, but don't do ha a Homestead and then Doral, because then you're going to be sitting on the, the turnpike for um, you know, hours on end. So you really want to consider, you know, how much time you want to spend in your car. Uh, Shoshana, does that answer your question? Okay. All right. Uh, foreclosures and short sales. Um, you need to keep track of this. You need to keep your eyes open. I think we're gonna start seeing this number increase. We are basically in a uh, borderline recession, depression, I don't know what. And thank you, Jonathan. And basically, you need to look at this. And um, is this good, is this bad? Well, um, you, know, you know, speaking at large about uh, the society, it's bad. But in real estate, uh, as a salesperson, this, is, this leads to opportunities. And you need to keep track, you need to monitor this on, on a regular basis. And if you need to know how to do that, just contact me and I'll give you some ideas later on. Okay, so I showed you some numbers. Um, now um, I'm gonna teach you how to do some more research on your own. What you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to floridarealtors.org. Now they changed the website around, so um, it's gonna be fun you know, going through here. But on floridarealtors.org, they've got a, a research section. And on their research section, you're gonna look for Florida market reports. And you're gonna look for the zip code report. That's on the bottom here, zip code report. So once again, you're gonna to go to floridarealtors.org, you're gonna to go to their marketing, you're gonna to go to the marketing reports, and you're gonna find the zip code report. There are two zip code reports. There's a new one and an old one, and I want you to use the old one. I don't like the new one. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna download this report and you're gonna read it. it. Every month you need to download this report and you're gonna read it. So let me show you how you read it. The first thing you do is you scroll down and you find the county. So here's Miami-Dade County, we're probably on page uh, 25. The next thing you do is you look at the third column here. These are total sales for that month. This is single family homes and this is condos. And what you wanna do is you wanna look for zip codes that have good numbers. Like here's 33139, which is South Beach, 70 sales for this particular month. Um, six homes, not a lot, but 64 condos with a median price of 270. 
Here's another neighborhood, um, 33157, which is Cutler Bay. 61 sales, 46 homes averaging 352, 15 condos averaging 145. So we don't care about the condos there, but there's a lot of homes. 33160, 79 sales, all basically all condos. So you wanna to come to this, this uh, report and start looking for neighborhoods. Here's 33136, only four sales for that month. We don't want that neighborhood. There's no business there. You might live in that neighborhood, you might wanna work that neighborhood, but there's no business there. Here we have um, Broward County, 33009, 77 sales, that's Hallandale. Average price 205. Here we have 33027, Miramar, 80 sales, 24 homes averaging 412, and then 56 condos averaging 127. Once again, that is our HOPA, 55 plus community. So you, 33066, 60 sales. Um, you want to 33069, 54 sales. You want to find neighborhoods that are good neighborhoods. Any questions on this? So once again, what you want to do is you want to figure out what neighborhoods um, do you do Boca, Denise? Um, Sorry, I didn't download it for the presentation, uh, but just go to um, download the report. You'll see Palm Beach County and you can find Boca there. Um, okay. The next step is you're gonna go to Matrix and you're gonna do a search. You're gonna change the status from active to closed. You're gonna put in your zip code that you want and you're gonna do a date range one to 90 days. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna see what's selling. And what you wanna do is you wanna start looking at what is selling. You want to do research of what is selling. You want to get listings of things that people are buying. If people are not buying million dollar or 500,000 or $700,000 condos, don't get those listings. You wanna get listings of things that people are buying. And this is gonna show you exactly what people are buying. See, here you're gonna see the results. And so this is um, listing price, and this is the sales price. And you're gonna see exactly what things are selling for. So like here, this was listed for 549, but it sold for 450. And that's gonna tell you exactly what the market is doing. And what you wanna do is you wanna print out this page so when you go on a listing presentation, you're gonna show this page to your, your potential seller so they know exactly what the price is in the marketplace. Another place to do research is here, Miami Board's website, Miami RE, they have a blog and a news section. And you're gonna come here and just, um, Look for articles, and if you see an interesting article on statistics, you're gonna print it out, literally print it out, and when you go meet with people and they start quoting you statistics from Zillow, you're gonna start handing it to them and saying, yeah, Zillow's a national company, but according to our local board of realtors here, this is what's going on. You're gonna hand them the articles. This is a great place to get data and statistics to back you up when you're talking to educated consumers. Okay, um, that's research. Any questions? So once again, you want condos below 300,000 and single family homes below 500. And you want to go to the zip code report and look up what neighborhoods are hot. So what is farming? Farming is when you mail postcards, flyers, or door hangers to a specific area, and you have to do this on a regular basis. You have to be willing to do this every month. If you're not gonna do this every month, don't do it. 
If you're gonna do one mailing, stop, see what happens, don't do it, stop. Don't waste your money. You have to be consistent. So the number one goal in marketing is creating awareness. In Dade, Broward and Palm Beach County, there were over 70,000 realtors. If you are not letting people know that you exist, you're invisible. You're competing with 70,000 people. 85% of those people are part-timers, but you're still competing with them. You've got to let the world know that you exist. So a farm area is a geographic area of homes or buildings. You have to have at least a thousand names in your farm area. Don't just farm your building. I just want to farm my building, you know, but there's only 200 units there. Three sold in the last year. There's no business there. You have to go beyond your building, beyond your zip code. You have to have a thousand names in your farm area. If you're gonna do condo buildings, you need to research a condo building before you go and um, get listings there. You wanna make sure that if you get a listing in a condo building, that it will sell, that there's no issues there. So first, uh, you wanna find out, go visit the, um, the management office, you know, show up at some pastelitos, don't show up empty handed. And you can ask them some questions, like did you pass your 40 year recertification? That's what's going on in, uh, you asked me about Aventura. A lot of the buildings in Aventura are now going through that 40 year uh, inspection and they have special assessments. Hollywood, Hallandale, all older buildings, they all have special assessments. Uh, are there any lawsuits? Here's an important question. What percentage of the building, of the units, I'm sorry, what percentage of the units are being rented? If more than 30% of the units are being rented, you can't get a mortgage. So if, it, if you're trying to get a listing in a building where almost, you know, a lot of the units are being rented, you're gonna eliminate the possibility of someone who wants to get a mortgage from buying in there. So you need to find out what percentage is being rented. Are there any lawsuits? Uh, what are the rules on pets? Can the units be rented out? What are the rules? How many second, par second parking space? Where's the gym? Where's the pool? Where are the schools? And while you're there, walk around and take pictures. You're going to need pictures. You're not allowed to copy pictures from the MLS. If you do, you get fined $500. Take a picture of the outside of the building. Remember, always horizontal. <clears throat> take a picture of the gym, the pool, the lobby. If you want, go on to Matrix, look for a vacant unit that's for sale contact the listing agent and say, hey, I need to preview it for a client of mine and go look at a vacant unit. This way you will know everything about that building and you're gonna decide if you wanna get listings in that building. Remember, don't get a listing in a building if there are problems in that building and it can't sell. Any questions? Okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go do your research, you're gonna see what's sold in the last 90 days. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to um, IMAP. I like IMAP, it's easy to use. And you're gonna look up an area and you're gonna download the list of the property owners. And so let me show you how to do that. So you're gonna go here to the Miami Boards website. You're gonna log in as if you're going to uh, the MLS and you're gonna click on IMAP. Here is the IMAP home screen. So what you're gonna do first is you're gonna select your county, make sure you're in the right county. You're gonna do tax search. You're gonna put in your zip code and then under property use, you're gonna choose either condominium or single family home. And then you're gonna start your search. If you don't do property uh, use, if you leave this blank, you're gonna get uh, commercial properties, vacant land. So tax search, make sure you're in the right county, the zip code, and then the property use. You can also draw a rectangle around um, the area you want. Once you do the search, you'll come up with the results 
and then you're going to click on download results. Any questions on that? You're going to download the results as an Excel file. And what you're going to do is you're going to open the Excel file and you're going to sort the list by last sale date. Um, so um, IMAP is free. Uh, Denise asks how many free per month. IMAP is free. You can do this as much as you want. It's part of your board uh, dues. So you can open the file in Excel and you're going to sort the list by last sale date. So here's the file. Here's the file. You're going to uh, come here, click on last sale date. You're going to highlight this. You're going to go to data and sort. Data and sort. And now what I'm doing is I'm sorting the list chronologically, date order. So for example, here's 1977 and here's 2005. So I'm sorting the list of the properties by when it's sold. The reason I'm doing that is because now I have different um, opportunities. The first opportunity is properties with equity. These are people who purchased that property before 2005. They've been living there 15 or more years. They probably have uh, no mortgage or a low mortgage. They have, you know, they owe the bank very little. And you're going to send them a message, a postcard that says property values have gone up over 20% in the past few years. Call me to find out what your home is worth. And then on the back of the card, you're going to show six properties that sold in the last 30 days. Did you have to sell these properties? No. But don't use the pictures from the MLS. Don't say, look what I sold in the last 30 days, unless you actually sold it. But you can show what sold in the last 30 days. So basically, you're going to go to this list And you're going to take everyone before 2005. You're going to take everyone after 2005 and you're going to delete them. You want everyone before 2005. Any questions on this? Okay. Next, um, short sales. These are people who purchased their homes between 2005 and 2007. These are kind of disappearing, but there are some people who owe the bank more than the property is worth. They may have bought a condo for 400,000 and then the market crashed and now it's worth, it, and then it was worth 200. And now it's worth about 300, but they still owe the bank a lot of money. So those are short sales. And those are people who purchased between 2005 and 2007. Um, let's go to the next group. These are upgrades or flippers. These are the cash buyers who came in between 2008 and 2012. Those are the cash buyers. Now, most of these are rental properties. They typically don't live there, but they might want to sell right now. Um, Rosalind, why only up to 2005? Because of the short sales, Rosalind. Um, we basically, we had an issue in this time frame where the market was crazy. Normally, uh, I would say differently, but here the market was crazy. So here, uh, prices were inflated. So this is, a, this is a rough patch. I mean, you could still mail to these people. You might, you know, you might do all right, but the, you realize that people who purchase in this time frame, it's a rough patch. Um, 2008 2000 to, 20, to 
2012. Those are the investors. Send them a postcard. Property values have increased over 20% in the past few years. Call me to find out instead of how much your home is worth, how much equity you're sitting on. And then once again, on the back side of the postcard, um, show six properties that sold in the last 30 days. So these are our investors, our cash buyers that came in. I've been reading some uh, articles. A lot of cash buyers are now trying to uh, sell properties because they need the cash. Because we're in a recession, they, they want to get their cash out. They need it for other purposes. Just listed postcards. If you have a listing, you need to do a mailing into the neighborhood. You want to mail it to everyone on your list because basically what happens is um, if you have a listing, you, you know, two things may happen. You may, and you do a mailing, you might get more listings, but there might be someone in the neighborhood who has a relative that wants to uh, move into the neighborhood. So if you have a listing, you need to do a mailing into the entire neighborhood, pick like a thousand homes around your listing. Um, Amber, to show what's been sold, we just use data on the back of the mailers being that we can, we can't use photos from the MLS. Correct. Don't use pictures from the MLS. What you need to do is, Amber, is while you're driving around, wherever you are, always take pictures. If you're going to a development before you drive into the uh, development, you know, stop. You don't even have to get out. You don't even have to get out of your car. Just roll down the window and take a picture of the sign of the outside. Or if you go to a condo building, just quick, take a picture of the outside of the condo building. You need to have a whole stock library of photos. So no matter where you go, take pictures. Don't copy things from the MLS. Uh, Shoshana, thank you, Amber. Uh, Shoshana, do you think mailing postcards are still viable way to get business? Yeah, believe it or not, it is. I'm gonna go over social media in a few minutes. Uh, but the thing about postcards is you're able to um, use this list and you're able to drill down to specific houses. So here, we can pick specific houses. If you're going to do other things like I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show you social media in a, in a couple of minutes, like Facebook. Then we're doing broad, it's like a shotgun approach. But here I can look at specific condo build, uh, units or I can look at specific houses that I wanna target. This is the best way to target specific properties. Okay? But the trick is you have to be consistent. Just don't do it once, you have to be consistent. Use the address where the tax bill is mailed. So here, what you have is you have different things. You have the owner's name, we need that. The owner's address, this is where the trim notice goes, the tax notice. And then you have the um, property address. We don't want that because if the owner doesn't live in the property, then they're not getting your mailing. You want to do mailings to the owner's address. If you see a lot of addresses in foreign countries, get some blank postcards, go to the post office, get some international stamps, and you want to mail it to those people. If you want, um, if your Spanish is good and you see a lot of people in South America to own property, send them a letter. But you definitely want to uh, send something to foreign owners. There's definite uh, possibilities there but you want to send it to the owner's address, not to the property address. Foreclosures, um, this is gonna get tricky. Um, keep your eye out. The only problem with foreclosures is you have to contact the asset manager at the bank and that's hard to do and they just don't walk in there and say to them, oh, just give me listings, I'll put it in the MLS. You have to have a marketing plan, so this is tricky. Um, Shoshana, is there a way to track if your efforts are equating to business? So the first thing that happens, if you do a targeted mailing, you, you wanna see how many phone calls you're getting. That's the trick. And then it's up to you whether you answer your phone 
and whether you follow up and whether you do a good job as a salesperson to chase that business. But the first way to track this is if your phone is ringing. And like I said, if your phone rings, you need to answer it. You've got 10 or 15 minutes to return that phone call. After that, you can lose that business. Okay, um, expired listings. So there is an uptick right now in expired listings. I see some opportunities here. You wanna to go to Matrix and look at for expired listings, but realize if something didn't sell, there's something wrong with the property. If it didn't sell, something is wrong. A lot of times the price is off. A lot of times you have people that put it in there for a ridiculous price, or the property is in bad shape, or the owner is um, unwilling to be able to talk to, or there's a chance they had a bad realtor. A lot of times people will have bad realtors. They'll take a listing, they won't, um, they won't put it on a good price, they won't take good pictures, they won't do any marketing, and then basically it won't sell and it'll expire. And realize once it expires, the problem is 50 plus realtors are gonna be calling this owner. So these people are pissed off and the next thing you know, the phone's ringing like crazy. So what you wanna do is get a three ring binder, get some uh, copy paper with the three holes in it, and you're gonna print out the daily expires from Matrix every day. You're gonna put it in a binder and then you're gonna wait three months and then you're gonna contact these people. If you feel compelled, you can call these people right away, but realize you need to follow up after three months. Let them calm down. Make sure that the listing is not, uh, you know, the property is not listed again, but call these people after a few months and see if they wanna relist. Um, knocking on doors, knocking on doors works. It's really good. You want to get door hangers. They cost about three hundred dollars. Those are those vertical things with the with the uh, with the hole in it. The reason you need a door hanger is you can't put things in a mailbox. It's against federal law. But basically, uh, the message on there is you know property values are going up. Look at what's selling in your neighborhood. Call me. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to IMAP. You're going to go to that list, and you're going to target specific homes that you want to go after. So you're not knocking on every door. You're, let's say a community of 200 homes. There might only be 15, 20 homes in that community that you wanna target because they've been living there a long time. Um, condo buildings are tough. Don't go plastering your condo building. You, your HOA could fine you. Uh, or if you go into a condo building you don't live in, uh, that technically it's trespassing, that's against the law. So you, this is mostly for single family homes. Go to the IMAP list, and then basically you want to um, target specific homes of people who, who have, are owner occupied that have been living there a long time. Okay, um, accept only good listings. Don't take a listing if you can't sell it. This is inventory. Don't take inventory that's gonna sit on the shelf. You don't get paid unless you, you know, sell it. So only take good listings. All right, Facebook. Let's go over Facebook. This is another method of marketing. Uh, if you don't want to do um, mailings, you can do Facebook marketing. So the way this works is you need a business page. So make sure you have a business page on Facebook. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to put a post on Facebook. Like here's one, what is your South Florida home worth now? Get your answer here. And when you click on this picture, this will send you to that person's website. Someone's ringing my doorbell. They'll have to wait. So basically, you want every time you list on Facebook, you want to make sure that 
Uh, every time you post on Facebook, you want to make sure that it has a link going back to your website. So the trick in posting on Facebook is boosting. The trick is boosting. This is advertising on Facebook. So the way this works is you go and you post on Facebook, you click on boost, and then you want to target your audience. So here I'm targeting people that live in this area. It's a 10 mile radius around Coral Gables. And then if you scroll down, you're going to have keywords. And your keywords are buying and selling real estate. Those are your keywords. So once again, you post on Facebook, on your business page, you click on boost, and then you select the people that you want. So you take a post, put it on Facebook, make sure it links back to your website, and then you boost it for about $200 a month. And that will get you people who, that will get you people you don't know. Any questions on this? Uh, if you go to um, my um, YouTube channel, there's a whole class on social media which talks about boosting. I know I went over this briefly. Or if you have questions about boosting, just feel free to give me a call. But boosting does work. It's called targeting. It allows you to target specific people in an area. Okay. Um, creating a postcard. There's different messages, just listed, just sold, creating awareness. Here's some sample postcards. Keep it simple. Whatever you do, keep it simple. Don't put a lot of um, information on the postcards. This is not your life's history. This is just someone to pick up the phone and call you. Here's something, uh, this is a school calendar. You should be mailing this out in July. It's very important. This sits on the refrigerator for a whole year. Um, selling your home, I have buyers. Keep it simple. Don't put a lot of information on your postcards. Phone numbers, people love this. People love phone numbers to city hall, utilities, restaurants, stores. Just listed, very important. People want to see what's selling in the neighborhood. And here is the recently sold. Did you have to sell that? No, there's a little sentence you have to put on the bottom, sold by participating members of the MLS. And sold by participating members, and you put that in little six point type. Just be careful about pictures. Don't copy pictures from the MLS or from Google images. Take your own pictures. Okay. Um, Let's go to advertising your listing. Uh, another five, 10 minutes and we're done guys. So then it's lunchtime. So the first thing is don't put your listing in the newspaper. Newspaper readership has gone way down and it's very expensive. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna place your listing in the MLS. Now, What's gonna happen is when you place it in the MLS, only people seeing it are realtors. Then over the next few days, the Miami board syndicates your listing to other websites like Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com. The rule is it, when you put a listing in the, um, in the MLS, you have to have at least one photo. You have to have at least one photo when you put a listing in the MLS. So be careful, don't put it in the MLS until you have all your photos. Because if you only put one photo, it'll go out to all these websites with one photo. And then when you uh, come, in, come in a week later and add all the pictures, it won't go to these other websites. 
So do all your photos and then put it in the MLS. Next, take good pictures. Either hire a photographer, they're very inexpensive, or don't do this. Don't do this. This is like, no, this is a bad picture. I mean, look, there's a broom here next to the water cooler. I don't know what's sitting over here. I mean, here, here's another picture. Don't take bad pictures. If, if I had a, um, if I have a realtor who did pictures like this, I would basically, I would fire them. Um, Evelyn, the office enters the listings and gives me the access to add pictures. Okay, Evelyn, I'm just telling you that if you put it in with one picture, it's gonna to go to all these other websites with one picture. You wanna do it all at once. Okay, so make sure you take good pictures and make sure always horizontal. So what you wanna do is, um, I have the new iPhone. It has wide angle lenses. Can you see that? It has a wide angle lens. If not, you can go to Amazon. You could buy a wide angle lens for your phone. They're like $20. Don't buy the fisheye one, buy the good one. And then you're gonna download this app. It's called Snapseed. Uh, this allows you to manipulate your pictures. So you take a picture, open Snapseed. This will allow you to crop it, change the colors, lighten the shadows, darken the highlights, and then you publish it. So get a wide angle lens for your phone and then run it through Snapseed or hire a photographer. Um, send out mass emails. I get these emails all the time. They work, they go to other realtors. Just go to the bottom of one of these emails and uh, click on the list, the, uh, the name of the company that sent it out. They have the list of all the realtors. Um, mail out postcards. So here's a postcard I got in the mail. Here's the front, nice picture, simple headline. Here's the back, it's a little busy, but it does work. Um, she did hire a photographer. This picture here, that's a drone. Most photographers that you hire have drones. James List, this is a website meant for uh, rich people. This is, if you have million dollar listings, you wanna advertise it on this website, jameslist.com. And create videos. So either hire someone to do a video or um, use your phone because your phone, always horizontal. Don't do this, I hate the vertical ones. Always horizontal. Basically, um, you can do videos and then you edit it. Uh, don't use music. I hate music, it's a distraction. And then also, if you're gonna put it in the MLS, don't put your name on it. It has to be unbranded if it goes in the MLS. If you want your, um, your a branded video with your name and information, then basically you're going to put that on YouTube and then you can create what's called a QR barcode and put that all over the place. So when people take a picture of the QR barcode, it takes them to your, your video. Okay, uh, I went through a lot. Any questions? And like I said, if you came in late, uh, just give me, go to the chat and give me your email address and I'll email you this presentation. Okay, before you leave, I have a minute to tell you um, what I do. My company creates websites for realtors. Like here's one of my clients, this is Guadalupe. These are linked to the MLS, like she has for sale, for rent, new developments, existing developments. She works in South Miami-Dade. And if you click on one of the neighborhoods, you'll see all of her information, you'll see the listings with all the uh, information, but it leaves out the listing agent's name and number. So if they want more information, they have to contact you. So this is like having your own MLS. You want your clients searching for real estate here, not on Zillow. Here is the, are the developments. So we have all the developments, the new developments and the existing developments with all the information and the floor plans. And we also have landing pages. 
and we also have we blog for you and then we link it to your Facebook page so it automatically posts there. So basically there's two costs for one of the websites. Uh, normally there's two costs. Normally it's $300 to design a site and then it's 59 a month for the hosting. Uh, due to the coronavirus, we are not charging the design fee, so we're not charging the $300 for the design of the website. But uh, the hosting is $59 a month. That includes the link to the MLS. It also includes changes to the website. Anytime you have changes, we uh, do it. We don't charge you. And then it also includes training. Once the website's set up, we set up a private Zoom class, and I teach you how to use the site. We look at your Facebook page make sure it's set up properly, and I make sure that you know how to do marketing so you get leads. If you want more information, uh, here's my information. Uh, you can call me or text me or email me. There's my website. You can go there to look at samples. And it takes a couple of days to set up a website. Uh, once again, if you go to my website, you're going to see us uh, in the menu bar. It's going to say classes, and you will see all the different classes that I teach. And later today, I will be uploading the, this class to the YouTube channel. Any questions? Okay, um, thank you for your time, everyone. Um, I hope I taught you something. Uh, once again, if you have any questions about the class, um, you know, feel free to contact me and um, you know, go out and, uh, you know, do some business. There is business out there. I know it's tough, but there is business out there. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.